kitty. Hi, kitty. It's in the bag? What's the bag say? Nothing. <laughs> the cat is just chilling, man. I know. Laying like a dog. What's going on guys? It's uh, morning time here. <laughs> day one of the 30 day melon feast. And now look what time it is. Memorable date in the history of America. Yeah, day one. What are we cracking into? First off, right off the bat, we're gonna have a watermelon smoothie. And I'm making a smoothie rather than just eating it because I gotta go help my friend move. She's moving from her parents' house out to an apartment, which is cool. So I figure I'd uh, bring a smoothie along with me. So I've juiced up some uh, watermelon here just by blending it. Now I'm walking over to my friend's house to uh, help her move. Well, I'm not really walking over him. Walking over to the car. All moved in. This is it. Good to go. Tiny room. It's good enough. That's all you need. Oh, no. Pull up bar two. I need to grocery shop. What are those? The comfiest shoes in the world. You probably wouldn't expect a fruitarian to go into Starbucks, but I go into Starbucks quite often. But it's not for the reason that you think. It's so I can take a pee. So a lot of people have been asking how to pick the best watermelon. You've got to slap them. You don't want ones that sound thuddy. Very thuddy. That one's nice. That's nice. That's a good one right there. I'll pick that one. Rainy day in Canada, man. Getting the melon hookup. That's what they do. They deliver right to the car. Thanks, man. You're welcome. Have a good day. Same to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So I had some leftover change from the other store, so I decided to come here and use it on a cantaloupe. Oh, the way to pick a good cantaloupe, well, it depends if you want it ripe or not. I like to buy them ripe. Today, because I don't want to eat cantaloupe today, but um, if you want them ripe, you want to make sure they're a little soft right here in the tip, the bottom part, like the tail part, and you want to make sure they're fragrant. The better it smells, the better it's going to taste. Just a little trip down memory lane. This is my old house right there, my little garden that I planted. And uh, yeah, man, this is the house that I grew up in. Nice, beautiful lawn. I used to have salads out there, summer nights. Beautiful, I got a pool behind there. And that wall, swing on that, those vines, sick. That's it, we're live, we're back here in the kitchen. It's 7.45 in the afternoon. What have I eaten today? I've eaten half a watermelon, I've eaten a cantaloupe, and I've eaten a honeydew. Not a lot of calories, and all I've done for exercise is a few pull-ups. The rest of the time has been spent helping my friend move and working on a 30 day raw food challenge. It's gonna be a website that you go to, you're gonna sign up and you're gonna be able to get 30 emails over the course of a month. It's gonna be freaking sick. It's gonna start July 1st and it's gonna help people stay held accountable for staying raw. Daily reminders, daily tips and tricks, you're gonna be getting PDFs, you're gonna be getting MP3s, you're gonna be getting day in the lifestyle little video clip motivational reminders and mental reprogramming ideas and techniques to help you stay the course over the course of 30 days in July if you want to do it. So spend this month of June 
either doing a 30 day raw challenge or a 30 day high raw challenge or a 30 day melon fast with me, melon feast with me. Whatever you want to do this 30 days, just know that on July 1st, coming up 30 days from now, there's going to be an official 30 day raw food challenge. All the videos are already pre recorded. I recorded them when I was in Thailand. There's a lot of PDFs in there, there's a lot of videos, there's a lot of tips and tricks that are going to help you stay the course. And I'm even giving you guys a list of all the people that have inspired me so you can go check them out. Boom, 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 boom. Like if you were to learn from the people that I learned from and take the same actions that I took, you'd have no problem sticking with a raw food diet. Like it's just about doing the right things, learning from the right people, putting the right things in your mind. What you put in is what you get out. The results that you're seeing other people living with right now, the results that you have right now in your own life is a result of what you've put in your mind or in your mouth. So whatever you've put into your freaking head. I'm putting this amazing delicious melon in my head. Mmm. Mmm. And this is my fuel, man. It's gonna take me to high heights. I've been feeling really high lately, man. Feels like I'm coming up on something. It's just like back in those, like, I, I did three days on melons once before, and I felt like I was coming up on something. And now I'm back in that same feeling. It's like, I drink some watermelon, like, uh, 11 in the morning or something and I'm like I get to drink this really like I, I'm allowed to I get to drink this whole thing of watermelon like why me what did I do to deserve this it tastes so good and it makes me it allows me to feel so good it's important to be selective with your words especially when you're saying things like this made me feel that or this makes me feel this or he made me feel that or she made me feel that nothing makes you feel anything other than what you're focusing on your focus is going to deter determine your feeling. And the other thing that's going to determine how you feel is the food that you're eating. Food is mood. If people say, oh, food doesn't affect how you feel, it's all about focus. Well, take a tab of acid, take some ecstasy, eat a whole bunch of peyote, eat a bunch of magical mushrooms, and try not to feel something different. You're going to feel drastically different if you put something in your mouth. If you eat a really big cheeseburger, you're going to feel very different than if you would eat a really big honeydew. Mmm. So, point is, what you put in your eyes and your ears and your mouth, whatever you put in your head, is really going to affect your whole organism, your whole reality. It's going to affect your reality. That's why it's so important to read your goals every day. It's so important to, to be aware of what you want in life and then focus on that. If it's cleanliness that you want, focus on cleanliness. Don't focus on dirtiness. If it's strength that you want, focus on strength gains. Don't worry about how weak you are. Don't worry about how weak that you were yet, how weak you were yesterday. Focus on how much stronger you are today or fantasize about how much stronger you're going to be next week. If you're unhealthy now, if you're overweight now, put all your focus on that dream body that you will have, that you do have. It's just maybe underneath some layers right now, but it doesn't matter because tomorrow you can be like 1% better. If you can become 1% better over the course of 100 days, you're going to be 100% better in just 100 days. That's three months. In three months time, you'll be 100% better if you just focus on improving 1% each day. So if you want to become 100% healthier, Today, right now, make a decision. Today, I will eat 1% healthier than I ate yesterday. It's just math. It's just math. But here's the catch. You won't take action at all unless you're inspired. You have a gun to point at your head, take action. But as soon as that gun gets lifted, you need to resort back to your old habits. So you've got to be insanely inspired, man. You think eating raw food is easy? I mean, in this kind of society where no one else is eating raw? No way, man. You think it's easy at a raw vegan festival? Of course. Of course. Eating raw vegan at festivals is so easy because everyone's doing it. Everyone's eating raw vegan. There's fruit everywhere. It's just like monkey see, monkey do everywhere. But I go downtown Vancouver. I go downtown. Where else do I go downtown? Downtown Vancouver, downtown Hilo, everyone's eating fruit as well. Downtown Chiang Mai, everyone's eating fruit. But downtown Vancouver, here in Canada, no one is eating fruit, man. Very rarely you see someone eating fruit. Maybe a homeless person on the side of the road with an apple or something, like props. Like guys eating healthier than the person in the McDonald's room, in the McDonald's restaurant, but whatever. It's not that easy because no one else is doing it. But if you're inspired, you can make it happen way easier. Inspired action is effortless. Remember that. Hmm. Wow. Mm. Inspired action is effortless. If you really don't want to do something in life, it's because you're not inspired to do it. If you have no energy to do something in life, it's because you're not inspired to do it. 
Inspiration triggers the release of energy. Desire is the triggering mechanism for the release of energy. People think you need to get energy from stuff. You don't get energy, you release it. Fruit allows you to release energy much easier because it doesn't hamper your digestion at all. This stuff is just baby food, man. Pure electricity. Like, imagine becoming that. You, you know, you become what you eat. You become what you eat. And I want to become something that tastes so good. Mm. If I adore this fruit, which I do, and I eat it, I'm going to have some self-adoration. If I love this fruit, which I do, and I eat it, I'm going to have some self-love. If I don't care about the food I'm eating, and I eat it, I'm not going to care about myself. If I don't like the food I'm eating, and I eat it, I'm not going to like myself. You've got to eat food that you appreciate. You've got to eat food that you love. You've got to eat food that tastes really good in its raw, natural form. You've got to eat food that that you're able to eat a lot of with no negative consequences. You've got to be able to eat. You should be eating food. Not, not you should be, but I like to eat food that I'm able to mono meal. I always eat food that I'm able to mono island on. If I can't mono island on something, I know it's not optimal. I know it's not optimal if I can't island on it. Or at least make a mono meal of it. So, what are some things that we can make meals of? Ex at the exclusion of all other food. We can make a meal of melon. We can make a meal of bananas. We can make a meal of blueberries. We can make a meal of nectarines. We can make a meal of papayas. Heck, we can even make a meal of avocados. But we can't make a real meal out of broccoli or cauliflower or even carrots. You, you can't really make a meal of that. You can't make a meal of obviously dead animal either without feeling like crap. You can't make a meal of sprouts. You can't make a meal of onion and garlic. But what you can make meal of, what you can make meals of, are the foods that you're designed to eat, are the foods that you're biologically designed to eat. So as a human being, I'm designed to eat fruit. If you're watching this, you're a human being, you understand what I'm saying, you're also designed to eat fruit as well. And when you understand and recognize that, when you get inspired by nature, like, I'm so inspired by nature. If you're inspired by nature, and you're like, wow, every other animal in nature is eating 100% raw. And you realize that everything that's alive in nature is raw. If something is cooked in nature, it's dead. It's dead. It represents death. It's cooked. So why would you want to put a dead food inside of a living organism? doesn't make sense when you really think about it in nature. It wouldn't happen. You'd eat 100% raw. Just like every other animal. People ask, Ted, where's your proof? Where's the evidence that raw diet works? Like, where are all the cultures of people eating raw? I'm like, look at 100% of the animals in nature. 100% of the animals for 100% of the past history on planet Earth, they've all eaten 100% raw. What more evidence do you need that raw works? What more evidence do you need? And then people come up with all sorts of excuses, like I can't afford it and this or that. Like if you can't afford it, man, start working for me. Start helping me make some, so if you help me earn some money by whatever it is that you'd want to help with, maybe promoting my work, maybe helping me get some gigs or something. If you find a way of helping me make money, I will pay you money as well. It's Making money is all about helping other people either make money themselves or providing value to them in some way. And like. Maybe helping people get healthier or helping people get more inspired or helping people perform a certain function or just giving them what, what they want. Maybe they want a cup. But if you can help someone make, or a company make money, then you're going to get money as well. So like a lot of the videos I, I do for editing, I, I'll edit like some commercials or something. Or I edit some Amazon ads or some eBay ads or something. It's like these videos that I'm making for people that's going to help them make money. So they're happy to pay me some money as well. And when I pay people for things, like I pay people for an email service, automatic email service, I pay people for Adobe Premiere video editing service, I'm paying people money because I'm using their services to help me make money. So life is not all about money, of course. It's about enjoying yourself. And thankfully, I enjoy editing the videos. Thankfully, uh, I enjoy sending off the emails that I send off because they contain valuable videos like 30 days of 
raw food challenge. Hmm. So find something you enjoy doing, get really, really good at it, and you're only going to get really, really good at it if you spend a lot of time doing it, and you're only going to spend a lot of time doing it if you really, really enjoy it. So find something you enjoy doing, spend a lot of time at it, you'll get really good at it, then start charging for that service. Then start charging for that service. Might take you a year, might take you a few months to get good enough to start charging for it, but I'm sure you can find something that the world needs that you like doing that you can charge for. And then once you start charging for it, you can go ahead and buy some fruit. So you can start buying fruit. A lot of it. And you keep it in stock. And you throw out all the other crap in your house. And you set. Your freezer's gonna be full of fruit, your fridge is gonna be full of fruit, your cupboards and Counters are going to be full of fruit. You're going to be set up for success, no problem. But you've got to want it, man. When you want something, you find a way. If you don't want it, you find an excuse. And that's fine. If you want to come up with an excuse, you can go ahead and do that. The thing is, when you give an excuse, they're empty. It's like you fire an empty bullet. It's not going to do anything. No one really cares when you give an excuse. If you didn't show up somewhere on time, you didn't show up on time, end of story. It doesn't matter that you were there was traffic or you couldn't find your pants or you couldn't find your wallet. You didn't show up on time. If you wanted to show up on time, you would have. You would have found a way. You would have... Forgotten the pants, forgotten the wallet, sped through traffic, got into your car, ran there, got there on time somehow. You would have made it happen. If you want something, you find a way. Same with the fruit diet, man. If you want to be 100% raw, you'll find a way. If you want to be cooked, you'll come up with some grandiose excuse. You'll come up with some reason why you shouldn't have to eat 100% raw. It's totally fine, man. Everyone wants different things in life. Me, personally, I want to eat 100% raw. I know you guys watching this, a lot of you guys want to eat 100% raw. And I'm so blessed that you guys are watching these videos because who else, who else like my neighborhood can walk up the street and start talking about raw food to? Nobody cares, but you guys do. You guys care about raw food and that's what makes this community very unique. There are so few of us. If you do the math, if you do the math, you take 7 billion people on the planet and you say, okay, how many of those 7 billion people have even heard about raw veganism? How many people have even heard of the concept of either fruitarianism or raw veganism or, or, or the raw food diet? How many people have even heard of it? You say, okay, of the 7 billion, let's be generous and say a billion people. All right? A billion people have heard of the raw food diet or fruitarianism or raw veganism. And then of those 7 billion, I mean, sorry, of that billion, how many actually know what a raw vegan or fruitarian diet actually looks like? Like what it, what it actually takes to be a raw vegan or fruitarian? What does it, what's actually involved? Of the billion people that have even heard of the raw food diet, how many actually know what it looks like? Again, let's be super generous and say maybe 500,000 people could accurately portray what the raw vegan diet looks like. Now, of the 500,000 people, how many people of those people even want to do that? Maybe 250,000? Okay, so 250,000 people actually want to do the raw vegan diet out of all the people that have ever heard of it. 250,000 people want to do it. And then of the 250,000 people that want to do it, how many people are actually willing to take the next step and try it? Are willing to actually go for it? Let's say 150,000 of those people. 100,000 people just, no, fuck it, no, you're going to try it. So now you get 150,000 people who they, they, they want to try it. And they actually go and they do try it. Now, how many of those people stay focused long enough to actually stick it through and get some results? That, my friend, is the uh, is the question. Because how many cigarette smokers have you know have tried to sm stop smoking cigarettes? They actually put down the cigarette and they say, "I quit, I stop," and then the next day they go right back to smoking cigarettes. Like they made the attempt, they made that initial valiant attempt. Sure, good enough. They, they made the attempt. They fall into that category of the people who've attempted to quit cigarettes. But 99% of the people who try to quit cigarettes fail, and it's the statistic is probably worse for people trying to get off cooked food. If you try and get off cooked food, the likelihood of you succeeding, statistically speaking. Is 99.9% .9 chance of failure. Cooked food addiction is way too strong. You take 7 billion people and you put them on the raw food diet and you say, here are all the benefits. Good luck getting off the cooked food addiction. You'll get a 0.000000000007% success rate. Just so few people, man, are able to get off cooked food for good. A lot of raw vegans even go back to cook food after five years, ten years. 
And I'm not saying I never will, but at this moment in my life, I'm definitely not. I'm done with cooked food. But I can't predict the future. I would have said I'm definitely not going vegan either, back if you asked me when I was 16 years old. So I can't predict the future. But what I do know for sure is that I'm aware now. I'm conscious now. I wasn't conscious or aware when I was 16 when I said I wouldn't go vegan. Now that I'm conscious, now that I'm aware, now that I know that raw is law, it's the way of nature. It's the way that nature intended me to eat. And I'm, I have so many idols and inspirational people at my fingertips I can watch on YouTube that can get me right back on track if I ever start thinking differently. It's very hard for me to believe that I would ever go back to something that made me feel like shit so often. Something that made me feel like I had a ball and chain. And it didn't make me feel, but I felt like I had a ball and chain with cooked food. I couldn't stop eating it. I, I would just keep eating and eating and eating until I felt like crap. And with raw food, it was very different. Mm. I have a very healthy relationship with cook, uh, raw food. Some people, I'm sure, have a healthy relationship with cooked food as well where they don't overeat all the time. But even for them, man, like, there's gonna be withdrawal symptoms of coming off cooked food. There's gonna be cravings that happen. People, one of the most common questions I get asked all the time is, how do you deal with cravings? It's a widespread problem people have, man. They crave cooked food. And the craving is like, feeling like you need something that you don't even want. So, you feel like you need it so much to the point that you actually convince yourself that you do want it, and then you go and have it. With fruit, it's never like that. Fruit is guilt-free living. All right, well, this smoothie never happened. I'm not even gonna make a smoothie. I'm just gonna eat melons for the rest of the night. Eight o'clock p.m. Camera is flashing. I think it's time for me to go. Thanks so much for watching. Day one on Melon Island. 150 pounds, feeling great. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace.